subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel 2018 now you're probably wondering well you're just saying apple or samsung dude what phone are you talking about nick come on get to the point here and well basically i'm talking about ever since the iphone 7 series or the galaxy s7 series a lot of those things will apply but i've been doing investigation and there will be an update to the galaxy note 8 coming next month the note 9 we will have it on the channel so stay tuned be subscribed for that and we all know well we've been knowing this since last year that apple's gonna bring the iphone 10 plus i mean they weren't tricking nobody when they just brought out one phone everybody knew business this is usual we'll bring out the small one bring out the plus one next year you're not fooling nobody apple but in this first part of a three-part series we're going to cover hardware and design and the reason i'm making this video is because you know coming up it's confusing every year these two companies basically own the u.s market share you I mean go to any you know very populated location you're going to see a samsung phone in one person's hand you're going to see an apple phone in another person's hand and depending on which state of america you're in or you know whatever you're going to see one more than the other due to you know certain states have biases towards a certain you know company or you know type of operating system ios and android here in the u.s okay so first up with the bodies let's begin with the 8 plus now if you want a standard body display like a 16 by 9 with your standard you know flat rectangular kind of phone like we've had in the past the 8 plus is really the only way to go this thing is going to be on its way out you're not going to see this no more except for the prior ones that were already built and maybe they might bring it to some emerging markets to get you into ios but at the same time the newer designs from apple going forward are not going to be in a 16 by 9 standard format so if you like this style then apple is really the only way to go anymore the last time samsung did this was way back when with the like the galaxy s7 i think and that was a smaller phone the note uh, i think it was a note fe note 7 that kind of had a 16 by 9 but it was more it was more narrow it had a curve so it wasn't you know as traditional feel so if you want that traditional feel 8 plus 7 plus these phones are still the way to go but they do have thick bezels now in terms of the bodies when it comes to material quality i want to talk about that next up the material quality i find on the samsung's to scratch just a little bit easier in my experience over these flagship apple devices you can't see it on camera but i've got more nicks quicker on the galaxy series than i did on the apple series this year in my past you know months using i had to put a screen protector on the s9 plus as this thing's been pretty easily scratching in a lot of places but the hardware on the whole though we do have i think a little bit better buttons for the apple device due to the separation in the button here and also you have a silent switch something you don't get on samsung now in terms of that tactile feedback though they're both very clicky and easy to find but i think they both missed the mark by putting you know volume rockers on the left i feel like it'd be smarter to have them all on the right side it's just more natural to just put your thumb here find your volume find your power button some phones do this but neither apple or samsung does this now it would be a little tricky for apple because they put a silent switch as well but still i feel like putting all the buttons on one side would be great but when it comes to just the button quality i find like the apple is just a little bit easier to find stuff due to its separation but both are equally clicky and feel good in the hand now one area where samsung i feel like does a better job with design is where they put the antenna lines now samsung on both the note 8 series and the s9 plus series they put the antenna lines at the bottom so that's an area where you don't really look at your phone a lot uh, is at the bottom and they also put the other ones up at the top now i'm not exactly sure somebody uh, pointed out if this actually makes reception better but the antenna lines here on the hardware is a little bit more hidden you don't really see it on the galaxy s9 plus or the galaxy s9 or the note 8 or the s8 the s8 plus but here on the iPhone, putting it on the side, I still easily see that. You see a phone from the side more than you see it from the bottom. So I don't like where Apple puts those antenna lines on their phones. They don't have them on the top, but they have them on the side. So that's a little thing I want to point out between both of these. I think Samsung wins on the hardware in that aspect. Speaking a little bit more about material quality, they both put glass on the rear. And, you know, the Samsung does do the similar thing as the iPhone 8 Plus with the aluminum sides here on both the Note 8 
and the S9 Plus, two of the best you can buy right now. But the Apple iPhone 10 goes stainless steel. Now, I think they should have went with a higher grade aluminum or you know maybe titanium on the sides here because stainless steel scratches really easily and i found that to be the case on the iphone 10 although it does feel a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more a solid construction than the aluminum so the iphone 10 stainless steel is a strong strong material but at the same time it scratches easy so really this one's pretty much a draw you know you you might like the feel of aluminum on the sides and you might like the feel of a stainless steel on the sides but i think titanium would have been the way to go maybe for the iphone 10 series now talking about another aspect of their hardware you get usb-c on pretty much every new samsung these days and you don't get that on the hardware of the uh, the iphone series so you get the lightning port now this is not really a problem because apple has been doing proprietary forever but when you have a macbook and newer products coming out with usb-c and pretty much everything on the market is going universally usb-c even the new microsoft go you know you should probably think about putting usb-c on your iphones i think many people would benefit from this and it would be annoying to some users who have many lightning accessories but at the same time you had the courage to take away courage to take away the headphone jack why not remove that lightning port and get on that usb-c game as you've already done it for your macbook so i think that samsung wins here when it comes to USB-C versus the lightning port. So who has better attention to detail? Well, this one's pretty much a draw because Apple has great attention to detail pretty much around their entire iPhone. I like the little torque screws in here. They have the, you know, beautifully crafted, just like the aluminum, how it meets the glass. It's just really smooth how, how it feels in the hand. But at the same time, Samsung has paid attention as well. And, you know, they have this camera that's super flat. And I like that attention to detail. The flash is behind the glass here on the Samsung. Same on the 8 Plus. And uh, it's just really well thought out. So both phones very well thought out. The Samsung is more of an evolution of the S8 here with the S9 Plus. But I think when it comes to the attention to detail, both have paid extremely close attention to every detail on these phones. And it's pretty much a draw there. I do like where Apple puts their SIM card tray. Samsung puts it up at the top. I do like how Apple has it on the side here. But at the same time, if they move those buttons over here, they would probably just put it on this side. So I don't really like reaching up here to get my SIM card out. But that's something small, again, subjective. But I do like how Apple puts it on the side. It just makes a little more sense to pull it out, put your SIM card in, slide it in that way. It's just something small, I had to say there. So quickly discussing the displays, you get curved displays here with Samsung versus more of a flat style display on the iPhone series. Even though you have that more narrow aspect ratio for the iPhone 10 and going forward, Samsung's been doing curves for a while. If you want a flatter display, you have to get the Note series the curve is more aggressive for the Galaxy S series of device, although that does make it a more compact feel in the hand when you are using the Galaxy S series of phone. I think that this kind of come down to personal preference, but I find that the flat display is a little less distracting on a day to day. For some reason, I just feel more focused on my content with when I'm reading specifically on a flatter display like the iPhone 10s or the iPhone 8 Plus. But when you are doing things like watching video or you know just just really trying to enjoy that display, I think Samsung has got Apple beat every time when it comes to just watching media, consuming content and not really reading and doing things that require you to really focus in on your display, just you know kind of just watching media and things like that. I really find gaming as well to be more enjoyable on the Galaxy's further display quality on the on the having just them beautiful OLED curved displays. So, so if you do a lot of reading on your phone and you're not really into the whole media consumption thing, I think that you'll like the iPhone's display a little bit more. But if you're into you know consuming a lot of photos and videos and things like that, I think you're gonna enjoy Samsung's panel more. One area where Samsung wins, and I talked a little bit about it earlier, is their flat camera designs on the rear. So the Galaxy S9, iPhone 10, we see the little hump there for the iPhone 10. This does make a difference when you have the iPhone 10 on the table. It does rock around a little. You hear that. Now on the Samsung, it doesn't really rock around that much, a little bit slightly, but that's not due really to the camera. On the iPhone 8 Plus, you also have a camera hump right there, a little bit more recessed than the iPhone 10s, but you don't have that camera hump for the Galaxy Note 8 either. So Note 8 with a flatter camera design. So I think Samsung wins on the hardware on that front as well. So design and hardware on the day-to-day, -day, which one feels better in the hand? Well, I think Samsung does a little bit better in making a bigger phone feel more compact 
in the hand. So the Note 8 has a monster six point, like four inch screen is somewhere in there, 6.398. It's, it's high up there. One of the biggest screens you can buy. But the Note 8 feels more compact than you would think. It's really tall, but because it's so narrow, Samsung has done a really good job at thinning out the bezels and making this feel as compact as possible for a large phone. And, you know, uh, Galaxy, you know, Note 2, those older phones felt bigger for their time than this phone feels, even though it has a really monster display. Now, the iPhone series, I feel like it has a little bit more of a comfortable feel around the corners, like, you know, just resting in the palm. It just has a slight more curve here. It just feels better here in the palm. So like if you're if you're doing a lot of one handed texting, I like the iPhone series a little bit better. Same here with the iPhone 10 has a really comfortable fit in the hand. And these curves are just they're just ergonomic. So I really like that about the iPhone series. Whereas on the Galaxy series, it's a little bit sharper on the edges to me in my experience. So when it comes to feeling the hand every day, I think the everyday phone is a little more comfortable on the iPhone series, but I think that Samsung gives you more for your money when it comes to screen to body ratio, basically. Moving on to their processors in RAM, well, it's basically very simple. Samsung has the better RAM on their phones, and meaning more RAM. Apple has the better actual processor, like the A11 Bionic chip is faster than the Samsung chip, but in the real world, Samsung has really stepped it up specifically on the Snapdragon 845 S9. This actually feels faster than any Apple phone in the real world when you're just opening up apps on the day to day. The Apple might have the more graphically intensive, you know, chip. Specifically, I'm talking about video editing. It renders so much quicker than a Samsung phone. But most people are not doing video rendering on their devices. And if you are, then you want the Apple phone. But Samsung really has stepped it up. And even with the Snapdragon series, that argument about Exynos being better than the Snapdragon, that's old news these days. These phones do not lag on Snapdragon 835 and 845. There is no lag on Note 8 or Samsung S9. So getting an Exynos or a Snapdragon series doesn't really make too much of a difference in this current day and time. And another thing here when we're talking about hardware for part one of the series is weight distribution. Samsung does a better job at this. I feel like Samsung's phones feel lighter than they are for their size. Being so large, they feel pretty light. The iPhone 10 feels pretty weighty in the hand. You feel that, you know, stainless steel. It's a little, you know, chunky little, it's got some weight to a device. Now, a lot of people associate that with premium, so I'm not going to judge you if you like that. But 8 plus, 202 grams, pretty heavy device. Samsung has got them beat when it comes to weight distribution, distributing that weight across the body. The Samsung phones feel lighter. For the size so we have arrived at the final conclusion of part one of this three-part series on should you buy apple or samsung 2018 we know we got the note 9 coming it's going to take the place of the s9 when it comes to probably the best samsung you could buy you know the 8 plus is out of here and there's going to be a 10 plus coming soon but which one is the better one to buy right now in 2018 when it comes to hardware at least well it's pretty close apple wins in many aspects like the ability to not scratch as easily. I found these phones don't scratch quite as easily as my S9 Plus has. Samsung wins in weight distribution. The phone is large, but it feels very light for its size. So Samsung has a more comfortable weight distribution, but you might like the more premium weighty feeling. You might call it premium on the iPhone series. But again, Apple has the better uh, silence switch where you can just silence your phone right from uh, just a button. So, you know, some people might say buttons are old news. Let's get those buttons out of there. Let's do all screen buttons and on fingerprint, you know, displays like we're going to see next year with the S10. Now, when it comes to their design, when it comes to displays, I feel like Samsung stepped it up by putting their fingerprint in the middle this year, uh, getting rid of that side fingerprint that they had on the Note 8 and the S8. That was a problem. But Apple came here and put a notch on their phone. Now, I know this upsets a lot of people saying, come on, man, just get over the notch. Nobody cares about the notch. It's old news. And no, it's not. When you're trying to evolve to an all screen display, this is in the way. It'll be gone in a few years. But for now, it's still in the way and don't deny it just because you love the device. It's still there. You still see it. And if you ever use a Samsung phone or use any other phone without the notch, you definitely notice that it's no longer there. So don't don't just so don't kid yourself. It's still there. Apple Fine 10 
check that phone out if you want to know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't make the iPhone 10 not worthy of a purchase. It's still definitely worthy of a purchase. Why do you think I purchased it right here? So that's it. That's part one of the series. This is a three part series. Next up, we're going to discuss software. So if hardware wasn't enough to make you decide to buy a Samsung or Apple going forward in the year of 2018, they got some new phones coming. It's going to be rather confusing. Stay tuned for my next part where we're going to discuss software between Apple and and Samsung. And if you found this video helpful, enjoyable, entertaining, informing in any way, shape, and form, do me a favor, click that like button for me. If you're new here,